Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you very much. Uh, my my first question is: Can can all of you hear me? Yes. No? Okay. Very good. Well, Dr. Biswas uh, uh, and colleagues, thank you so very much for this extremely warm welcome, and thank you again for your very comprehensive over comprehensive overview of the history of Erie and Beery and broader Bangladesh collaboration. Hey. Uh, as was mentioned uh, early on, uh, I have uh, a long personal commitment and history of working with Bangladesh. I first, first came to Bangladesh in 1992. It was the very first uh, trip I took to uh, uh, from outside of Erie when I joined Erie. Uh, in 1992. Previously, I was working in Latin America on rice, and my first trip when coming to Asia was, in fact, to visit uh, Bangladesh. And I think it's fitting that one of my last trips as theory director general is to come back, come back home, I think, in many ways, to, to Bangladesh, uh, an, era, an area that is really, in many ways, the cradle of uh, the translation of rice research into positive impact for rice farmers. Uh, like Dr. Biswas, I can tell you I have a strong interest in history of, uh, of rice research and the history of our institutes. It's very fitting that he opened his, uh, his presentation with some historical perspective. Uh, Dr. Gene Heddle, our Erie historian, is with us, which is, I think, proof positive of the commitment and interest I have in, in history. And some of that is rooted in, in my personal journey of discovery in rice research. Uh, of the great pioneers that, uh, that Dr. Biswas mentioned, I worked with almost all of them. In fact, the person who introduced me to rice and convinced me that I should spend my career working on rice was none other than Peter Jennings. So there's a direct lineage from me back to the very origins of rice research in international uh, context. So I'm very, very proud and very pleased uh, to be able to carry on and continue that, that legacy. Uh, Dr. Biswas highlighted the very many areas of positive cooperation, historical achievements, the mutual successes, the great collaboration between Beery and Erie that have allowed uh, rice sector in, in Bangladesh to, to be so incredibly successful. The success of, of, of rice research to contributing to the food security and overall improved well-being in Bangladesh is unparalleled in the world. And it's quite impressive and all of you who have had so much to do with it have very much to be proud of. Uh, the achievements are truly stunning and uh, I it makes my life very, very easy when I go around the world and I can speak with donors and I can talk about how well their money has been spent. And Bangladesh always figures at the top of my examples of countries that previously thought were going to be in very, very serious straits with respect to food security, as was mentioned, is now a rice exporter. That's a miracle that nobody 20 or 30 years ago ever imagined would be happening. I think if, and I know, in 1985, if someone had said that in 2015, Bangladesh would be an important rice exporter, they would have laughed. They would have said, you're crazy. There's no way that could possibly happen. Look at the numbers. Look at the yields. But they underestimated the power of human innovation the transformative power of research combined with the energy and commitment of scientists and government workers to make the lives of Bangladeshi farmers and consumers much, much better. So this is one of the great, great success stories in the world. And you all have a tremendous amount to be proud of for your, for your achievements. And I'm personally proud to be associated with it. Uh, I sometimes tell Erie scientists that they should, one worry they needn't think about as they get older is that they've wasted their lives, that they've made major contributions. And that's something that I think is really, really amazing. 
Now the relationship with Erie and Beery is something that will evolve. There's no question about it. We see, when I look, I, I imagine that my successor and my successor's successor will continue to come to Beery to share in the achievements and the progress that's, been, that's being made. But that will trans, it will change. Uh, as we become much more sophisticated, as Beery becomes much more sophisticated in applying science, the nature of our partnership will change. The nature of your research will change. Dr. Biswas mentioned that 187 uh, varieties from Bangladesh were sequenced in the latest sequencing program with, with Erie and the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences and BGI. Now, if you think about this, not that long ago, just the sequence of one genome made headlines around the world. But today, we have 187 uh, traditional varieties of uh, rice from Bangladesh that have a full genome sequence. And that is an enormous area of discovery that waits for us. And so we look at, we look at the, the, the rate of improvement and the rate of discovery over the next decade will be many times faster than the rate of discovery and improvement over the past. Uh, Dr. Fox mentioned that uh, many of the mega varieties, BR11 is one that's very, very po popular, have been grown for many years by rice farmers. But as he mentioned, that, though that variety and many of the other varieties were selected under very different climatic conditions. We, as research institutions, have to assume leadership and move forward and prepare our rice varieties and our rice production systems for the new climate that is coming. And we've seen illustrations of the kind of work that's being done. The stress-tolerant rice varieties are a prime example of the kinds of materials that will have to be developed to adapt to the climate change that is facing us. And Bangladesh is on the front lines of climate change and the impact of climate change on agriculture. And so it will be the leadership of Beery, with the support of Erie, but the leadership of Beery that will be required to make sure that the rice production systems in Bangladesh can cope with the challenges of climate change. And we've talked about flood tolerant rice, both flash flooding and stagnant flooding, uh, anaerobic germination, uh, drought tolerance, uh, cold tolerance, heat tolerance, tolerance and, and resistance to biotic stresses diseases and pests, all of which we have to redouble our efforts. In many ways, I think that the challenges facing us over the next 25 years dwarf the challenges facing those who started the first green revolution in the 1960s. We have a greater challenge ahead of us than our predecessors did. However, we have many more and more powerful scientific tools at our disposition. So it's a very exciting time to be a rice scientist. And when we look at the changes that are taking place, they're enormous, not only climate change, but changes in society, economics, the expectations of rice farmers and their children are changing. Uh, the day before yesterday, I was with farmers uh, in, in Polder 30, and we were talking, and I asked them, how many of them have children? Of course, they all raised their hands. They all have children. I asked them, how many of you want your children to be rice farmers? Nobody raised their hand. Nobody wants to be a rice farmer. And you understand that. It's a life of drudgery. It's a life of poverty. It's a life of extraordinary hard work and uncertainty. However, I then asked, they said they wanted their children to be doctors. They wanted them to be teachers, lawyers, business people. And I asked them, well, who's going to grow the rice for your children? And they looked at me and they went, oh dear, someone will have to grow the rice. And it's up to us as scientists to transform the way rice is grown so that it will be an attractive undertaking for the next generation. And our research and the technologies that will be developed should be directed in part to make rice production a profitable and attractive undertaking. Now, not every person who's a son of a, or daughter of a rice farmer will be a rice farmer 
10 or 15 years from now. But a few of them should, and those few who decide to continue in rice production should have the expectation to make a good living. It should be an honorable profession that is rewarded by society. And I think that our contributions are to improve the productivity of the rice systems, rice-based systems, so that farmers can make a decent living. And I think that's extremely, extremely important. Of course, the, uh, the, the transformation of rice varieties is to make them more, more uh, profitable. Higher grain quality, more nutritional quality uh, are extremely important uh, to, 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 to add value to the rice crop. And it's adding value to the rice crop, adding value to the rice system that we have to be paying more and more attention to. Now when we look at the, the transformation of the rice systems, we're talking about value chains and that farmers can participate. Not only should all of the benefit attribute to the middleman, the rice farmer has to be engaged as well. And that means empowering the rice farmer, having the farmer understand how their crop enters the marketing system. And rice manager, crop manager, is a very important tool that empowers rice farmers. And that's the sort of thing we're thinking about. How can we empower the rice farmer, not only with technology, better varieties, better cropping systems, but also the knowledge of how the rice market functions so that they can benefit from the, the value that they add, add to their crop. Now, when we look back at the Erie and Beery uh, partnership, we look at the rich history, the, the ways in which rice breeding and rice management and rice protection have transformed the Bangladeshi society. We need to consider that this will be changing in the future. I've mentioned that, that we have not only climate change, but socioeconomic changes before us. The private sector, which previously ignored the rice sector, is becoming increasingly interested in participating in the rice sector. And we, as public institutions, need to welcome the participation of the private sector. Uh, it, is a, it is incumbent upon us to make sure that the technologies that come out of our laboratories and our field work and our minds and our writing are adopted and taken up by the private sector in a way that will benefit the rice farmers. And that is something that Erie is working on very carefully now, exploring how a relationship with the, between the public sector and the private sector can be mutually beneficial. Historically, we've been very suspicious of the public sector I'm sorry, of the private sector. The private sector has been dismissive of the public sector. I think we need to come together and understand better what the strengths and the weaknesses of each party are so that we can be complementary. That's extraordinarily important. And sometimes I'm criticized because I believe that a conversation with the private sector is something very important that we should have. Running away from the private sector, running away from the seed industry will not be a productive way to help lead us to the future. But we need to be very, very forthright in our dealing with the private sector. And we need to address not only their, their concerns, but also their weaknesses and take advantage of their strengths. And when we look at further changes in the system, Dr. Fox mentioned the uh, transformation of rice breeding. Uh, because of the great partnership between Beery and, and Erie, when the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation came to us and said, we are very interested in the way Erie is transforming its rice breeding, we would like to sponsor work with a national program and look at how a national program could transform its rice breeding to meet future needs. And they asked me, of all the national programs in the world, who would you recommend that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation support? Who would take leadership in transforming rice breeding? <coughs> I instantly, instantly responded, 
Bangladesh and Biri. That institution has shown leadership, has shown strength, has shown commitment, and I would trust Biri to take leadership forward, to take the courageous steps to look at its breeding programs like Erie has looked at our breeding programs and see how can we transform our rice breeding to better address the needs of the future. And I'm very, very proud that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation listened to my advice and are now in the final stages of preparing a significant grant to support Beery in transforming its rice breeding program. And we look closely, or look forward to working very closely with you in the future. And I'm very, very proud, and very uh, pleased that, that Beery is, is, is willing to take this courageous step and show this leadership worldwide. So Dr. Biswas, uh, with those words, I just wanted to uh, share some of my thinking. I went on a little bit longer than I was intending, but I am so pleased uh, to be here once again. Uh, I hate to say that it's a farewell tour, um, but it's so good to come back and see my many old friends and colleagues and make new ones and, 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 and continue to cement the relationship between Beery and Beery. I look forward to the rest of the day, and I look forward to our meeting uh, uh, with the Minister of Agriculture this afternoon. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Nice and